So the Fed dropped the Fed's fund rate 50 basis points last week, but what does that mean? Brian and I are gonna nerd out and we'll talk about it and you guys will know in a tight 20 minutes. Let's get into it. Good show, guys. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> That's right. So let's get into this, guys. We have a little bit different show today. Brian's been on many times over the last 18 years, hosted, guest hosted. Now we're together. We both spent the morning nerding out on what's gonna happen in the future so you guys can be educated and you can share with your clients. So we have about, I don't know, 10 or 15 slides we're gonna nerd out. We're trying to figure out what this all means. I know there's a ton of content out there. Everybody became a subject matter expert yeah. last week. Uh, we don't know any more than anybody else, but we're gonna nerd out and maybe it'll be valuable to you. So let's get into it. My first slide I think is interesting mm -hmm. is kind of looking ahead, but I know everybody will, and we have dot plots too, which we'll, Brian's gonna talk about, but like what, do, what does the MBA think? What does Fannie Mae think? What does Wells Fargo think? And what is, what is Moody's? What do they all think? And so we have this first graph. It's really easy to understand. I know some of the dot plots get a little bit confusing. Brian will do his best to explain them in a minute here, but this is really just shows what everybody thinks. So MBA, Wells, Fannie and Moody's. And right now we're hovering around six and this foreca forecasts out the rest of Q4 this year. And then also, you know, all of 2025. And you can kind of see it drops. and Everybody's kind of in the same neighborhood. We're around six now and landing around mid fives. I personally think that's, pretty accurate. We might actually land below the mid fives, but I don't think we're going to go much lower. Any thoughts on that? I don't see outside of some catastrophic event, catastrophic yeah. event, how it's possible to get back down into deep into the fours and into the threes. We saw at the beginning of this year when rates touched 5.99 on government loans for a second. Um, and then we moved back up. I think a slow meandering downward move in rates is one, what we want. It's healthy for the market, honestly. Super healthy. And two, probably the most likely scenario we forward. Um, we're just above five right now, and I can see us getting down into 5875, that area by the end of this year. And we'll give you guys all these slides too. Of course, we're the real estate source, so we're going to give you the source so you guys can use them and create your own content or just, just forward the show today. But I agree. Guys, we don't want to see threes or fours because Brian's exactly right. If we're seeing threes or fours, it means something went wrong again, and they had to lower rates to, to spur right. on the economy. But fives, five and a half, that's a healthy market. We're getting refis out of that. We're mm -hmm. getting purchases. People are doing debt consolidation. That's all good news to me. We're helping with the housing affordability. We're helping with the demand and the supply issues that we're going to talk about. Maybe not the supply so much, but we're helping with yes. the demand issues we're going to talk about. We might, we might exacerbate the supply problem. Yeah. Uh, next slide is really interesting to me. I don't know if I have a ton of takeaways. I just think it's really interesting. Again, looking forward now that we had this 50 basis point drop. So this is forward performance following first Fed rate cuts. What's interesting to me, and again, I don't know that I really have a takeaway here, but it's a tale of two types, mm -hmm. two tapes. So 2001, 2007 is that blue and red line. You can see what happened after the first Fed rate cut. And then in you know, 84, 89, 95, uh, the market performed quite a bit better. And I know you dug into a little bit like what mm -hmm. started each rate cut and why. And I think that kind of helps put it in perspective. I'm just not sure what where we're going to land, you know, tw you know, 2024 and beyond. Yeah. Are we going to be at the top of this graph or are we going to be at the bottom of this graph? This is the danger of prognosticating is you really don't know what's really, really happening in it until it's in your rear view mirror. Right. So looking at the differences between when the market went down 2001, 2007, uh, and when the market, you know, stayed flat to went up previous years, it's really what was happening in the economy that I saw. In 2001, we were at the end of the dot-com bubble. Yep. That was a huge, huge, huge recession that we went into. In 2007, we all know we had the great you know, credit great, uh, great crunch recession. the great yep. recession. Uh, so those large things, and then the Fed came in and cut it reactively to those, as opposed to, um, what, what are the years here? 84, that's coming right off our huge inflation of the late 70s and early 80s, where Volcker raised the federal funds rate a ton, and then preemptively started to lower it, and the market thought, hey, seems like inflation's under control. Those same things happened in 89 and 95, where it, was, it wasn't as re a reactive rate cut, when the Fed started, it was more proactive, and I think that's what kept the market going up. And and this seems to me to be a reactive rate cut, uh, but it is based off of um, uh, outside of 1984, those prior years pre prior uh, previous to 2001, the Fed was just kind of there. Yeah. And now the Fed has controlled our market from the pandemic on forward. Well, yeah, I guess it's kind of comforting too. Like the Fed controlled this entire process. Mm -hmm. This isn't something really, really, really bad happened while well, the COVID did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they had to react. They they purposely raised rates, right? Yep. And and it, the intended consequence, as much as we hated it, it happened. It slowed yep. the economy down, right? Uh, slowed inflation, and mm -hmm. and now they're on the backside of this, controlling it. So, uh, it kind of gives me a little bit better feeling that we're in somewhat control. And if we get into the deep waters again, we can always 
you know, play our ace up our sleeve and go back to, to lower rates. And usually for this graph, back to this graph, usually you, you know, make money more affordable. Mm -hmm. That makes sense that, you know, you'd see market uh, increasing. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like we've had a really long, like, remember we had 12 plus years of expansion after the Great Recession. So I don't know that we'll be on the top side of this graph this time. If I had to make a guess, I hate this. This sounds like a hedge, but probably more in the middle. I don't think we're going to have a huge run up or down. Yeah. But you never know. You never know. The, the, the People have been saying the market's overbought, the S&P, the Dow, the Nasdaq, the equities market has been overbought for a couple of years. And eventually it's going to be true. If you keep calling a thing, right. a thing it's going to become that thing. But yeah, I believe the one thing that's really good about this Fed is they have been clear every step of the way. We can agree or disagree with the moves that they made. Uh, but they've always been clear about why they were making their moves and what the moves are going to be. And it's a big reason why this 50 basis point rate cut didn't really have a huge effect on the market because everybody knew it was happening. That's already. a great point. Uh, yeah, exactly. And mortgage rates kind of, I mean, technically got a little bit worse on that mm -hmm. day, but really stayed flat. That lends credibility to your, your statement of like, everybody kind of saw this coming, which is the job of the Fed too. It not really to be is. surprising and not yeah. to get... I got you moments, but to kind of have a cool, calm market. So that's a great point. Let's get into the actual Fed dot plot. Now, guys, this gets confusing even for lenders. So realtors watching, you know, Brian's probably one of the best to, to go into the next few slides and explain what the dot plot means and also kind of what's coming and why it matters. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's not written in stone. It's the future. It's, pr it's predictions. So we yeah. don't know for sure. So this is the dot plot is simply, and they call it their economic projections. So September is their SEP, September economic production, uh, predictions. The dot plot is just where the Fed members see the federal funds rate into the future, and it's anonymous. So you can see that they have, uh, on the far left here, they have dots at different interest rate levels. They have two at the very highest level at 5%, and they have one at the very lowest level down near 4%. And then a lot of them are grouped in the middle. And the predominant voting, you can see in the light blue, the predominant voting is where the, the consensus that we say is where the Fed sees the federal funds rate going. And so from this plot, you can see as it moves right, it moves down and then stays a bit steady moving forward. So the Fed right now sees uh, the federal funds rate still going down, going down about 25 basis points in November, probably, which is one quarter of 1%, going down another one quarter of 1% in uh, December uh, for a total of 100 basis points or a 1% cut. Yeah, the 50 that we just had to the 225s and then another 100 basis points or another 1% next year and then moving down and staying steady from there. That's what the Fed sees. So this is lower than their last dot plot. Their dot plots come out uh, once every quarter. So the, eight, the Fed meets eight times and then four times a year, they, they give their economic predict, uh, projections of where they see the federal funds are going into the future. Which is really interesting. I mean, we're in late September here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a hundred basis point cut for the rest, you know, including the one we just had for the rest of the year, which is only a quarter and then a hundred more next year for next year. So really, really good news for the economy. Uh, the next slide really unpacks it even more in more detail. Again, we want you guys to have a really good understanding mm -hmm. of why these matter and why we talk about them a lot and why the Fed talks about them a lot. So it kind of goes into a little bit more de detail here. Yeah, it shows what we kind of just talked about, but it shows you that two Fed members saw zero more rate cuts. Uh, at the end of this year, seven saw one quarter of 1%, nine saw a half of a percent over the next two meetings. Uh, and then one saw three quarters of a percent. Now, you guys might remember in October of last year, October 31st, November 1st, the Fed met, and we had a big market rally after that for two reasons. One, Janet Yellen, the Secretary of the Treasury, said, hey, we're gonna sh we're actually going to be putting out fewer uh, treasuries than we had anticipated, so pulled some supply off. But also, Bernanke said, and the Fed said in their dot plot, not Bernanke, Powell said in um, uh, the Fed said in their dot plot that they saw three rate cuts in 2024. So we really rallied off of that, got some pretty um, non-rate cutty economic information mm -hmm. in the first quarter of the year and then the market started to pull back and rates went up well they're still going to get their three rate cuts this year right this is what they're saying they september they didn't say when it was going to happen yeah exactly they still got their three rate packed cuts. it in at the end of the year it's yeah. still going to happen though so you can see from the next side that the dot plot shows that it's going down pretty predominantly next year and then it's held in pretty steady after that that's how the fed sees it now yeah thank you to barry and the mbs team for for making that slide. Great data super that. super good data next one this one's yours and this is really interesting because we actually get into previous cycles and when 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 and how they started their rate uh, cuts so i'll let you explain this one too so we just went over the dot plot of what the fed sees happening and then just gave them credit for being right when they said last october and early november that there would be three rate cuts this year now they still believe that and they still have time to do it and it looks like it's going to happen that's them being right these are the times where they have not been so right <laughs> yeah. uh, and what's happened and what we think is probably going to happen moving forward 
Uh, so the Fed, we talked about the Fed cutting reactively instead of proactively and why 2001 and 2007 were a bit different with, uh, for the market because the Fed was cutting reactively and they had to cut more quickly. Really similar to what happened in March of 2020 when the Fed dropped their federal funds rate from one all the way down to zero in reaction to what was happening because of COVID. So this shows in the past, really the past uh, 25 years or so, when the federal funds rate, so the federal funds rate is right now between 4.75 and 5%, uh, cut from uh, 5.25 to 5.5. Um, when the federal funds rate is above the yield on the 10-year treasury. So the yield on the 10-year treasury note is that, uh, like, what is that chartreuse line yep. in there? And the federal funds rate is above it. And we can see what, what has happened each time when the, that, when, when the federal funds rate has been above the 10-year treasury. Something in the economy was not right. The federal funds rate was dropped really quickly. We moved into recession. That happened in 2001. It happened in 2007. It happened pre-COVID. And now we're again where the 10-year treasury is really far above. In fact, before the federal... Uh, uh, cut, it was about a one and a half percent higher than the 10-year treasury. So go through the in your homework, this is this is all Brian too, from starting in 84, 89, 95, kind of go through those and the basis points for each yeah. one of them. So in 84, we had a 50 basis point rate cut from 11.75 to 11.25. In 89, it was just 25 basis points. And remember, 25 basis points is one quarter of 1%. In 95, it was just a quarter. 2001, 2007, both of those times where the market really went down, it was a 50 basis point rate cut different than the 1984, I think, because rates were in the 11s at that time. And they, we had shot uh, the federal funds rate up to deal with really bad inflation at that time, way worse than we were in right now. You guys remember, may remember seeing videos. If you're old enough, you may remember the, the gas lines that you had mm -hmm. and the prices going through the roof uh, and the Fed stepping in a changeover from uh, uh, Federal Chairman Burns to Federal Chairman Volcker. And Volcker came in and just shut the economy down as quickly as possible to get inflation out of control. Yeah. And this year, so in 2007, we went from 5.25 to 4.75 with a uh, in the federal funds rate, which is a one half of one percent cut. This year, there's a one half of one percent cut from 5.25 to 4.75. I've heard that question a lot this week. I wonder how other previous rate cycles started. Well, there's the math for you. The last three also started with half point. So now we're four rate cuts in a row, mm -hmm. all starting with half point rate cuts, which is pretty interesting to me. Again, now remember, these are all different Fed team members, and you know. All, yeah. Not all teams are made the same. Some and we're better than than yeah. other teams. And I think this team right now is is pretty good too. I know they've gotten a lot of flack over the last four or five years, but mm -hmm. I also like to go, guys. You try to run the country and the world during a massive global shutdown. Like at a time, it's easy where, to arbitrary quarterback yeah. that, but that's a really difficult thing. At a time where you make a move today and we don't see the effects of that move for eight to twelve months, like it's a multi multi trillion dollar freighter they're trying to turn. Yeah. And so they do something and they don't have a reaction the next day and all of a sudden people think they're awful. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend to be smarter than those guys. But um, here, here we are successfully navigating through one of the craziest times we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and now heading into a really good uh, time, especially if you're in the real estate mortgage industry. So uh, next slide gets super busy. I know, Brian, you'll kind of help distill this all down so it's a yeah. little bit more palatable. So this slide, you can do away with all of the, um, the writing on this chart. Uh, all I want you to see is how the two-year treasury now reacts and forwards the uh, for, forward runs the federal funds rate. So if you want to take a look at where you think the market is going, where you think the federal funds rate is going, the market speaks to that with the two-year treasury. So you can see is that it, it falls it pretty closely and the two-year treasury normally moves first. And right now we can see the two-year treasury continuing its move downward, uh, which means the federal funds rate is going to cut to catch up to that historically. Hold on, just a sec. Yeah, I still don't see your name here as a subscriber. Are you not subscribed to our YouTube channel? Come on, click on the link down below and just subscribe. We appreciate you watching. Now, back to the show. I love the next one. It's, uh, sorry, we're nerding out, guys, but we're gonna t tackle this thing from all angles, but unemployment, I'll let you talk about that one too, yeah. and, I'll, uh, and then uh, we'll move on. So a lot of people talk about the SOM rule. That's not a thing you guys have to worry about. <laughs> um, it's named after a lady who says, hey, when unemployment gets this much higher from its low, then that's always triggered a recession. It's triggered the last nine recessions. Um, she's come out and said, hey, I don't necessarily think that's the case this time, but who knows. But what, we, what I want to look at is what has happened to inflation, pro, or excuse me, to uh, unemployment before the Fed cut, and then what happened to unemployment as we moved into recession. Because right now, the reason for the Fed's pivot, it's kind of twofold, but it's really one. So the Fed has a dual mandate of stable prices and um, uh, uh, maximum employment. So those are two things that the Fed is chartered with um, taken care of. Yep. Now, uh, stable prices has not been the case for the past two and a half years. 
And so they've really pushed on getting inflation under control. And everybody has heard maybe about their 2% inflation target and how they wanted to get inflation down from where it was to where they wanted it to be. That was their stable prices mandate. And uh, what brought price, uh, interest rates down over the past couple of months was Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, coming out and saying, hey, we are now pivoting towards we're looking at maximum employment. Yep. We have a dual mandate. We feel like we've really done well with stable prices. Now we're looking at ma uh, maximum employment. And so this chart shows exactly what has happened in the past. Every uh, single time. Every single yep. time. And it's happening again right now. Inflation has gone from the low to mid threes all the way up into the low fours and probably going to continue upward. Still very low, but it's just how it's just it's economic cycles, you guys. That's all it is. And there's no blame one side or another side. The president doesn't do it. So please stay off your Facebook saying that the president did this <laughs> or that. You give them way more power than they actually have. Yeah. It's just economic cycles. And in order to prepare yourself and to be the in the best position possible, you just got to understand what's going on. So you can kind of look forward and see what's probably going to happen then. Every single time employment numbers, as you guys see, have, have risen. And it kind of, you know, a lot of people have been critical, critical about the employment numbers and the revisions. Mm -hmm. You could easily uh, argue that if those you know numbers and reports are accurate, we'd probably already have our first rate cut. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But if history follows suits, and it looks like if you look to the far right of that graph, they're already starting to trend up. They are, yeah. Um, and it's cause and effect. You're 100 percent right. Like that's, that's yeah. They they know what's going to happen next, or they at least have a good idea. Mm -hmm. This is exactly why all this is happening. And Pal mentioned that in his press conference, and he said. Hey, we just found out too that the economy actually added 818,000 fewer jobs. And we still added 2.1 million. Right. But it's based so much off modeling that we have, because the, that number comes out every single month and you can't talk to everybody every month. So we model and then we go back and, and you know, adjust when the new information comes in. And you're right. The real unemployment rate, probably a lot higher. Yep. Uh, the real jobless rate is probably a lot higher. So we looked at Fed cuts. Um, we looked, talked about like where the market's heading, talked about unemployment. Let's actually talk about what we care about. Uh, if you're a lender and a realtor, like let's look at how it actually impacts mortgage rates. You guys are all ed highly educated, know that they're not directly tied, but they are loosely tied. So let's go in. Next two graphs really show that, and I'll let you unpack that too. So you see three Fed rate cuts, and also what happened with 30-year fixed mortgage rates right afterwards. So this is really, 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 really important. And it's really important here on September 20th because on September 18th, the Federal Reserve cut their federal funds rate by one half of 1%. And leading up to September 18th, as a lender, I had hundreds of calls of people saying, yeah. hey, I'm going to wait till the government cuts my rate. We're not going to go into to that statement. Right. But uh, the, the, the way the market works is they don't wait until a thing happens and then trade on it. How, like we had talked about before, the Fed has been very clear and very transparent about what they're doing and why. And so the market then is going to trade off of that information. So the the rally that people were waiting for after the Fed cut their federal funds rate had happened well before that. Yeah. And we can see from this chart that that's not new news. So on the left side of this chart, you can see interest rates going down into the first rate cut and then coming up a bit after, going down and coming back up. You can see that same thing happening in the second rate cut as interest rates went down and then went up and didn't really come back down All Right. post Fed rate cut. And so we see then in the third one, interest rates going down into the Fed rate cut and then coming back up, staying excited to coming back up again. And that's because the federal funds rate, like Ryan said, you guys know, what it speaks to is Fed policy. If they're going to be more uh, accommodative or they're going to be more restrictive. And that's what it speaks to. And so if the Fed is go saying they're going to be more accommodative, that trade is happening before they become yep. more accommodative because they want traders want to be out in front and they make want to make money. We talked about the Federal Reserve meets eight times a year. The market trades every second of every day. Yep. So they're not waiting until the Fed does a thing to make that move. The market trades off information they have at hand. And that next slide just kind of zooms in and, and unpacks it even further. I'm not sure, you know, the, lot, the previous three that you show here, the rates did spike and technically mm -hmm. on the day of, you know, the, the, the 50 pip cut, mortgage rates moved up slightly, not enough to really make an impact, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see if this follows suit, the, 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 this next rate cut actually has higher interest rates. I kind of assume that it'll push rates down. So it's really interesting just to look back and see but not every, again, you made this point earlier, every cycle is different. Every reason why they, when they went into the cycle and they're coming out of the cycle is different. Again, this one's massively different. We've never come out of a global pandemic and shut down. Mm -hmm. So we always got to remember that, especially I've made, I've made this statement many times on the show. I love you old timers. I guess I'm becoming one too, but no, you haven't been here and done that with a, a post COVID rate environment. I say that with the utmost respect. Like I remember when I had dealt with, no, you didn't. No, We've never done sure this. Did. And that's okay. None of us have been here. None of us know exactly what's going to happen next. But that's also why we, you know, do this. Like we can give you ideas of what we think is going to happen next. But we're post-pandemic. We really have no idea. Everything uh, is just like 
there's not a hundred percent guarantee of anything. You're going to put your chips in where you feel like the odds are greatest. Yeah. And that's all we're doing. As silly me. I thought the stock market would crash during a pandemic. Yep. No, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> sure so what do I know? <laughs> and show over. <laughs> show over. You should nuts. stop watching now. Stop watching now. <laughs> uh, this is kind of interesting. So uh, existing home sales uh, really, uh, you know, uh, we saw home sales fell nearly double the expected 1.3%, guys. Lowest, if you really look to the left and compare, this is the lowest since the Great Recession in 08. And then in 2010, because we have a little spike there, mm -hmm. that's super interesting. Oddly enough, at the same time, uh, the median sale price rose 3.1%. So you had existing home sales dropping like a rock. Somehow prices are still healthy. Uh, but this might be like a, a leading indicator showing mm -hmm. that maybe prices will come down, which may not be a bad thing for, for home buyers, especially, and I'll show a graph here shortly that I'll talk about the affordability I just think that's a really interesting graph, especially when you put it aside and compare it to 08 and 2010. Yeah, and existing home sales seasonally adjusted in July of this year were at their lowest level on record. So that we talked about the supply issue. The market is stagnant right now, it's not moving. And to your point about, hey, if you say you've been here before, you haven't been here before, we've been similar in a similar place, but not this place. 2007, 2008, people like to talk about, well, I got through that, so I'll get through this. Yep. I hope you do, I really hope you do but it's a different reason you're going to the hospital. In 2007, 2008, you needed open heart surgery from a cardiologist. In 2024, 2023, 2024, you got a compound fracture and you need to see a doctor about that. Yeah. You're not going to a cardiologist for that. You've been to the same hospital, you're not seeing the same doctor. I told you we'd do a tight 20, now we're at a Lucius 22 minutes. So we're skip our next, next two slides. We'll land the plane with the last two slides, which is this. Home, uh, home payments, guys, are dropping. Actually, it's the biggest decline in four years. Take a look at that graph. Yes, it's not as low as the you know 2020 and 2021 and the crazy extreme low rate, rate environment that we are in. But this is really, really, really good news, really encouraging news. I've talked about the other side of this for the last two years. I hated this graph. Now I'm starting to love it because <laughs> we're starting to see these payments come down over $300 a month drop since the high of April. I love this, I love this, I love this. Share this out. It's only gonna get better in my opinion. And then the last slide, this may look like bad news. It's actually really good news. Mm -hmm. So full-time real estate agents and brokers in the U.S. Uh, down considerably. Uh, and I know everybody's like, yeah, I get that. And why is that a good thing, Ryan? Well, like we, we've encouraged you for the last two years, stick it out. Mm -hmm. There's going to be another amazing run on the backside of this. And here we are getting ready to start that run. It's going to look different than other runs for all yeah. the reasons we talked about today. And I think there's going to be a lot of uh, work involved with getting and taking advantage of this run. But if you made it as a broker, you made it as an agent and a, and a lender, you know, here you go. This this is the, you're going to reap the rewards. You know, there's fewer competition. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger piece of the pie and it's growing every single day. And you're going to be able to take part of that pie. I'm really encouraged by this. I know it's, you know, it sucks. I don't want anybody to get out of the business. I love everybody on, on the realtor side and the lending side, but also, it was kind of overinflated. Yeah. You know, we needed we needed this attrition to happen. And so if you made it you, and you're still here, this is good news. If you're still here, when we just looked at existing home sales being so abysmally low, if you're still here when mortgage purchase demand is at 30 year lows, if you were still here on this bump up, you're, you're, you've set yourself up to succeed and you should be absolutely proud of yourself. And you should really seize up and you're ready to work. Yeah. Guys, get, get ready. I'm excited. Again, this is not going to be like previous runs. We're not going to see rates in the threes and four and your phone's probably not going to ring off the hook, but there's going to be a ton of opportunity. We're just going to have to work for it. And I'm really, really excited. Use these 15, 20 slides. We'll put them in the comment section below. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for Brian nerding out with us. And if you appreciate it, throw some comments in the comment section and share it. And we'll see you guys next week. This is more of a response show. You guys tell us it's a call in. Caller number one. What do you yeah. think about the Fed funds rate? Mom?